I'm Earl Stewart. I welcome you to Earl Stewart on Cars Mystery Shopping Report. This is uh, a shopping report of Treasure Coast Toyota. Here's a report. As if I were Agent Lightning. Uh, Three guys were standing out front when my daughter and I arrived. One step forward asked me what he could do for me today. I asked him if he had any RAV4 hybrids in stock. He smiled and told me that he had one on the showroom floor. Once inside, Christian, the salesperson, said he believed that they may have two RAV4 hybrids in stock. He left me to look at the one in the showroom while he checked on the other one. Came back uh, quickly and said that the other one is available, but it was out back getting the windows tinted. He said it had been sold but the buyer backed out the night before. Christian told me to meet him up front. He pulled around, parked in front of the showroom. It was a new 2022 RAV4 XLE hybrid with an MSRP of $38,030. There was an addendum too with a $3,800 markup, $3,800 markup there, and uh, $399 for tent. Uh, we hopped in for a test drive. On the ride, Christian demonstrated good knowledge of the vehicle. He explained <coughs> the Treasure Coast Toyota store was marking all new vehicles up 10% over MSRP, and all hybrid vehicles are marked up 15% over MSRP. Now, they don't advertise that, by the way. You find out when you come <laughs> in. We return to the dealership. I see the price breakdown. Christian left, returned in eight minutes with a worksheet. The top line was 43000 $734.50, $5,704 over MSRP. There was a $1,502.50 discount, which made the adjusted price $42,232. They added an $898.50 dealer dock and $6.50 in taxable fees. That's tire tax, I think. The real selling price was $43,137, $5,107 over MSRP. I told Christian that I needed to talk with my husband and ask uh, for some privacy. He handed me the key, suggested I FaceTime him, meaning my husband, so we could see everything. I spoke with my husband. We discussed our situation. We were in desperate need of a new vehicle, and that is true. And I could no longer afford to wait. As Stu said, time is money. She had to wait six months. This new or, car, or longer, the time was more costly to her than the money. We were incredibly lucky to have found the exact vehicle we needed in stock. According to them, Treasure Ghost, it had been an ordered car, and the, for some reason the buyer backed out, and it was real fluke that was. We decided to go through with the purchase, a bittersweet decision. I told Christian we were moving forward. He helped get some documents forwarded to my husband, like the credit app, and I had him send me a picture of, the, of his driver's license. I asked Christian about including my car in the deal as a trade. It was a 2013 Chevy Camaro convertible with 140,000 miles. Uh, I had my co- my husband send the pictures of the car, the van and the odometer. Christian passed everything along to his manager. It took about 40 minutes and the manager came over to say the best they could do on the Camaro. Trade-in allowance was 5,000, maybe $5,200 tops. He gave me all the reasons he couldn't give me more, citing an accident and some damage. My husband and I agreed to the appraisal. I asked Christian if he could do anything more for me on the price of the big dealer fee, he said he couldn't, so I, uh, I countered back as asking if they could go to $6,000 instead of 5200 on the Camaro. Christian immediately replied to me by asking if I would sign now if he could get me the $6,000, and he left and asked him. Christian was back in a few minutes to say we had a deal. I called my husband, told him to bring the Camaro, and we were buying the car. Once my husband got to the dealership, we waited only a few minutes before going into Wally. He was quick in a vision and covered all of our options for warranties without pressure. We purchased an extended warranty for $2,582. A road hazard policy for 925 and a prepaid maintenance plan for $809. So here, here is a lot of money. That's, uh, what, four or $5,000 yeah. and uh, added profit. So in addition to... Five thousand some odd dollars over sticker. Uh, this would increase the over sticker by what? Another couple thousand. Well, yeah. I mean, the total amount she paid well, it wouldn't be part of the car, part of the price of the car. Yeah. Like when she financed it, the, the bank yeah, would look at yeah, that differently. Yeah. Than, My advice is you don't buy an extended warranty. You don't buy a prepaid maintenance plan, 
and you don't buy a road hazard policy for $925. So we advise against that. We also told her that she has 90 days to cancel that. And if she doesn't use any of those products, she can cancel it for 100% refund. Right. Uh, but then the other thing, when, if you're, when you're financing, just because we get these questions all the time, if you, f- if you cancel a finance product, you don't get that cash back. It just lower. It's like a house. It lowers your your uh, your payoff on your car. You don't pay it off sooner. Yeah. It's just uh, yeah. you have to wait. Uh, I mean, you pay it off sooner. Three or four years or whatever you finance it for before you get it back. Final paperwork matched the work sheet. Except now there was a little more a two hundred seventy nine dollar electronic filing fee, which was not revealed. That was on the, the that was on the worksheet. That's a no no. Oh, and of course, Toyo Guard was part of the whole product too, so you could bump the profit up a little further. The MSRP, by the way, manufacturer suggested retail price is a misnomer because the Toyo Guard for $700 is put on by the distributor, right. not the manufacturer. Toyo Guard costs the dealers about $250 and they sell it for $700. Six, yeah, $699. $699. And, uh, and here's what I don't like. When we finish, Wally, the F&I manager, hands us our paperwork uh, on a credit card size thumb drive. Christian was working on getting my new RAV4 ready while my husband and I were in Wally's office, F&I manager. We came out, he was waiting with the keys, books, and manuals. He helped us download the Toyota app on our phones and help set up everything. We thanked him, drove home together in our beautiful new ride. So we did an analysis, so it was uh, it was pretty, pretty brutal. Um, so she paid a total of, including the junk fees, um, $5,380 over MSRP. Yeah. And then an additional, the, back, the finance products were another 4652 bucks. Yeah. So I'm guessing probably around a $12,000 profit. Yeah, $12,000 profit with the back end. The other part of this is taking the car home immediately. They have the arbitration agreement she signed, which most dealers do. We don't, but most dealers do. Arbitration says you can't sue the dealer. You have to take it through the American Arbitration Agreement um, procedure, which is the, the deck is stacked for the seller and not the buyer. So the, uh, when you lose your right to take a dealer to court to sue him, you've lost a lot. Also, it has here on the uh, thumb drive uh, that uh, she didn't see or didn't read that uh, that when she takes the car home, she can't bring it back. Sale is final. Uh, you, once you once you sign the papers, you take the car home. Uh, a lot of people think there's a 72-hour right of rescission of the contract. That's only for home solicitation sales, and it does not apply to anything else. So, but all, almost all products, when you buy it and take it home, you own it. And even if you say they misled you or overcharged you, you can't get out of it. And the bottom line is, if it happens to Agent <laughs> Lightning, it can happen to you. And uh, you have to be careful because emotion is a very powerful driver of what we do in life. We don't like to admit it, but we all have it. We make decisions in life on emotion. So don't bring yourself into a position where you're going to let emotion put you in that position. It's hard to uh, anticipate. There's a saying among car salespeople, is you continue selling until they buy or they die. So you you invest your time. And the longer you keep a person at the car dealership, uh, the longer they feel obligated to you because you're a salesperson, you're paid a commission. They feel like, this poor guy's been out in the hot sun. He waited for me for two hours before I got there. And he spent another two hours with me. So all that figures into your psyche. Okay. There we are. And we need uh-huh. to vote. Now, my grade, D minus for me. Uh, Rick? D minus for my grade. From me, they get an F. I'm, I'm going to move up to a C minus. I'll do them a favor of getting a C minus. We recommend on this show that you don't go into car dealerships, that you do it online, by telephone, and make all your decisions, do your research. You should only actually go into the car dealership to take delivery of the car. Now, we know that's totally impractical, but minimize it. Certainly don't do the buying experience there. Go in to look at the car and drive it, but do not go in there to make a decision whether or not to buy it.
Hi, this is Earl Stewart. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to be notified of new videos that we post to our YouTube channel, simply click on the subscribe button and the bell icon in the lower right-hand side of the screen.